Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about Silver Lake by Hesse Hollapoinen, out May 28th on Nuclear Blast. The album has 9 tracks, 37 minutes in length, and this is his solo project, debut record, but perhaps you know him better for his lead guitar work in Amorphous. Now this is an album that doesn't live off a structure, it doesn't need a structure in order to survive, in order to have playability, in order to have quality. It's all about the strength of the individual songs, not necessarily the strength of the collective. You can listen to this album on shuffle, nothing really changes. Each song lives on its own ecosystem, doesn't need the track that comes before and it doesn't need the track that comes after. It's all about the individual quality of the songs and not necessarily how they intertwine with each other. Now there's a lot of elements that permeate throughout this record. They change and they morph from song to song, but the elements remain the same. So that gives the album certain cohesiveness across all nine tracks, but it doesn't really connect the songs in a direct and fluid it kind of way. Also having different lead singers on the album allows the record to be overall a little bit more eclectic and it doesn't bind the, the record as much as it would be bounded together on a traditional sense when you have a band releasing an album with one lead singer with a fluid mentality behind it where you want the first track to lead into the second track and so forth and so forth. So this album is built like a compilation and that's how it comes across. Once you get into the soundscape, the album is very rich and it has a lot of layers to it. This is not a record that you can fully digest at the first time that you go through it. You have to listen to it multiple times, look deeper into the song, see all the different layers that they have, see all the different elements that they have to offer and really understand those elements while moving from, from track to track. The changes that they bring to the forefront really dictate the impact, the drive of the tracks themselves. This is also not a record that I feel comfortable putting a label on it or, or categorizing it under one genre. Definitely prog is definitely the driving force. You could feel it on every single song. You can even see it in terms of the guest appearances as far as vocalists are concerned. But this is not just a prog album. This is a great album. There's great music in it and that's how you should look at it. Now within that soundscape there's definitely two elements that play a huge role in the overall experience of the record and that is the keyboards and the guitars. The keyboards to me have an incredible role because they're there almost on every single song but they sound different, they come at you from a different angle, from a different perspective, giving you a different output. Sometimes a little bit more melodic, creating a little bit of an underlying melody, really helping the guitars and the overall sound to push itself forward and sometimes creating atmosphere, creating a different layer, a different feel, a different veil that really encompasses the songs and gives you a different sensation as you progress through the track and as you digest the lyrics on those specific tracks. So the, roles of the, the role of the keyboards is magnificent because they weren't repetitive, wasn't the same style, the same approach, the same delivery, track and track and track again. And this allows the record to use one element, one single element throughout it without making it sound repetitive then you get into the guitars. I love the guitar sound, it doesn't matter if it's acoustic, if it's electric, the guitar sound on this album is very rich, very powerful, very well defined, understands the borders, understands the boundaries that the album has, what you want out of each and every single song, and how can you include the right element at the right time in order to have the guitars play an important role in creating depth of sound, depth of experience, and creating layers, and creating a little bit of a driving force, but not necessarily be the driving mechanism behind the overall sound experience. As far as this album is concerned, all elements push the record forward. There's not one single element that is sitting behind the driver's seat dictating where the record is going or dictating where the individual songs end up meeting at. Then you have the vocals. As far as vocals are concerned, this is a super eclectic album when you think about how many vocalists are in it. You have nine tracks, one of them is instrumental, which is the opening track and then you have seven different vocals throughout the eight tracks that remain. Now all seven vocals have some similarities to them in terms of their background and the bands that they, that they normally perform with. So from that perspective there is a little sense of similarity and there is a little bit of a sense of a prog influence when you look at all of them. But as far as delivery, as far as what they can offer to a song, that's completely different from vocalist to vocalist. And that is one of the elements that really changes the experience, that really changes the output and how you perceive each and every single song. Because I felt that every vocalist on this album brought a little bit of themselves, brought a little bit of their own band into the forefront 
and change the song ever so slightly in order to make it their own. They have their own fingerprint within their tracks and that is absolutely obvious as you progress through the record as you listen to the different tracks that it has to offer. Overall, this is a magnificent album. It's a compilation, like I said, it doesn't really feel like a full-blown record that has that linear approach, that has that drive, that roadmap from the first track all the way to the last track. This is an album that you press play, you sit back and you, you get lost in it. You enjoy the quality of the individual songs. You're not really concerned on digesting the journey or digesting the path. You're more concerned with digesting where you currently sit on the track that you're listening to. That is the beauty of this record. It allows you to lose yourself within the tracks and then therefore lose yourself within the album in general while giving you different looks and different perspectives at every single turn. Now, once you get into uh, my favorite tracks on this record, I pick three songs that offer something slightly different, even though all of them do offer something slightly different, but I felt like these three were very unique in their own way. And I wanna start off with Ray of Light featuring Einar Hemlin of Leprous. This guy has an incredible voice and he really took this song to another level. This is a song that's really pushed by the vocals more than anything else. The piano sound that this song has is outstanding. It creates a great layer of melody and atmosphere. It really does both. In some tracks, you'll find the piano or keyboards doing more of one or the other. On this song, I felt like it really did both. The verses are a little bit more controlled, both musically and vocally. And then when you get to the chorus, the chorus is a lot more robust. The vocals match the robust sound that the chorus have. And it becomes a little bit of a proggy, melancholic track as you move across it, but Einar's vocals really have that vibe to them and he really made this song his own. Next, Promising Sun featuring Bjorn Strid of Soil Work and the Night Flight Orchestra. Great piano opening and I thought at the beginning that this was just gonna be the opening and then the piano would disappear into the track and the guitars would take over. That's not the case, the piano stays there, but it stays there as a very thin layer within the overall sound experience. This is a track that gains volume, that gains heaviness. The guitars come in, the drums come in, it becomes a much heavier, a more robust song. The orchestration also plays a role in creating volume, in creating depth, in creating a lot of sound. This is one of the songs on the record that has the most amount of sound to it. It just really feels like it's always growing, always expanding, and that piano layer is always hidden within it in order to give this certain uh, dark melody to the overall track. Like I said, this is a song that becomes heavier. It just moves along very well. The vocals really drive the experience, both in the verses and in the chorus. Uh, more direct approach in the verses. I really felt like that was the feel that the track had in store for the listener. Then when you get into the chorus, that's where you're gonna feel more of the layers coming to the forefront. Not to say that the verses are not layered, but they're just not as noticeable as they are once you get into the chorus. In the chorus, everything becomes a little bit more clear. You can see the different things coming at you, including from the vocals as well, because the vocals also have some important layers that really add volume, that add presence. Overall, when you think of this song, it almost feels like an amorphous track featuring Beyond Strid on vocals. That's the sensation that I got overall from this song. This could have totally been a track out of Queen of Time. Last but not least, Apprentice. This is the last song on the album and it features Jonas Hanks of Catatonia. He's featured on two tracks. He's the only vocalist that, that sings on two different songs on this record. This is an incredible song. The acoustic guitar opening is beautiful and then it permeates through the track, staying there, becoming one of the main focal points of how this song is constructed and how this song is delivered. It plays a huge part in the overall melancholy that the track has and the overall darkness that the song has, but the vocals help as well. The vocals in the chorus give you chills. They're beautiful, they're melodic, they're melancholic, they're dark but they're so embracing at the same time. They don't push you away from the song. They bring you closer. While on the verses, you feel a little bit like you're on the periphery of the track. Once you get into the chorus, the vocals find a way of really bringing you in and making you feel comfortable. This is a song that when you listen to it, it feels very simple. And a lot of that simplicity really comes from the acoustic guitars. They feel like they're stripping down the song of all the things that are making it be. But once you start paying more attention to it, you realize that this is actually a very complex track. It just has that simplicity to it. It just feels simple, but it's not. There's still a lot of layers there. There's still a lot of sound. There's still a lot of things coming at you. And the way the vocals intertwine with the overall soundscape is just absolutely phenomenal. This is it. This is Silver Lake by Essa Holopainen out May 28th on Nuclear Blast. Let me know your thoughts. 
on the project, on the singles, use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.